Hello everyone, welcome to the One Class channel. My name is Millen and I'm a software engineering student at Carleton University in Ottawa, Canada. Today, I will be going over some commonly asked physics questions at both the high school and university or college levels. If you're interested in getting some help with your homework or if you're interested in getting help with some tutoring, check out the links in the description below. Awesome, so let's get this physics party started and hop into our first question of the day. Okay, cool. So uh, the first question that we have on the menu today is asking us to calculate the potential at point A and at point B. And I guess it just asks the same thing thrice, but um, we're gonna assume that this typically means um, electric potential given that we have some charge values here. So essentially at point A right here in the center and point B right here, we just gotta find their potential. And um, that, that's the question, okay? So how do we find the electric potential? Let's uh, write some stuff out for that, electric. Potential. This is represented by the letter V because uh, electric potential is also commonly referred to as voltage. Uh, we, s we have different words to specify them because typically we use voltage more for um, when we're talking about electric circuits and electric potential when we're doing more like static electricity um, analysis, but um, you can kind of use them interchangeably. So um, we have V, which is the electric potential, is equal to K Q over R. Okay, so uh, this is V. K is Coulomb's constant. Which is 9 times 10 to the 9. Um, the units are pretty wild on that one, so um, I'm not going to write it out because I don't have it on the top of the dome. But um, just know it's a constant number, so you just send that in your calculations and everything will be good. Um, our Q value, this is our charge in coulombs. And R is our distance away from charge. in meters okay so this is all the ingredients that we need to um, calculate the electric potential and it seems that we can reason out all of these um, ingredients of interest just from looking at the diagram okay so let's only look at um, looking at point a for now and we see that uh, we don't really need to draw B because there's well B has no charge associated with it so we can kind of ignore that for so for part a we have a situation like this, okay? So here we have the charge Q2 is equal to 10 microcoulombs, which is equal to 10 times 10 to the negative six coulombs, okay? Now, two meters below that, we have point A. And that's two meters. Let's just assume that our units are here are referring to meters. Um, it doesn't really say specifically, but um, using meters will definitely simplify our calculations. Okay, and you can see that like, you know, Q2 is only two meters directly vertical above from point A. So, you know, that's gonna represent that diagram. And um, to continue on here, we're also gonna have another two meters because, well, looking at the diagram, we have zero two and zero zero. There's gotta be two meters of separation between them, perfectly vertical. And at the base here, we have Q2, which is gonna be equal to negative two microcoulombs, which is equal to negative two times 10 to the negative six coulombs, okay? And the reason why we wanna convert those uh, micro, uh, those SI prefixes into um, into regular numbers is so that our units are a lot more easy to deal with because otherwise uh, we may have some issues where we're like an entire order of magnitude wrong and that's a that's a problem okay so to calculate the volt uh, the electric potential at VA we need to find the contribution from Q1 and the contribution from Q2 and um, you know, add, add up those, their contributions individually, their total sum is gonna be the electric potential as observed from point A. 
Okay, so scrolling back up to here, we know that our electric potential is going to be kq over r. So we just need to write that in um, corresponding to here. So we have kq1 over r1 plus kq2 over r2. Now, some quick math, we can see that we can factor out K, and since R1 is equal to R2, which is equal to 2 meters in this case, we can factor out 1 over R1. Or, I mean, we could also do factor out 1 over R2 because they're the same, but um, you know, generally, uh, what I'm trying to get at here is that we can rewrite VA after these factorizations is going to be K over R, and this is q1 plus q2 okay now it's always great to set up your algebra first before you sub in any of the numbers because um if you make a calculation error along the road and you're like putting in the numbers as you go um, it can be quite difficult to find out what the problem is so that's why i recommend always do the algebra before you do the substitutions okay so now let's make these substitutions now that our algebra is looking like it cannot really be simplified any further so our value for k is 9 times 10 to the 9 r that is going to be on the downstairs there uh, as we see from the diagram is going to be two meters nice and simple okay now what was q1 because we add, have to add q1 plus q2 so q1 is 10 whoops i mean q1 is negative 2 times 10 to the negative 6 negative 2 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs plus um and q2 is 10 microcoulombs which is 10 times 10 to the negative 6 Coulombs. Okay, so this is going to be our calculation for VA. Let's send that into our calculator to figure out precisely what that's going to be. So we're going to have 9 times 10 to the power of 9 um, times 0.5, because that's the same as dividing by 2, times, in brackets, we got negative 2 times 10 to the power of negative 6 plus. 10 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Now, the result of this calculation for me is um, whoops, I did the calculation wrong. I just need to make a quick adjustment. So my calculation for this is 3, uh, 36,000 volts. Another way that we can write this is 36 kilovolts. Okay, and that is approximately equal to what we've uh, calculated here. Um, but they just used a more precise value for Coulomb's constant, which, um, you know, it's, it's up to you, but I just find it easier to remember 9 times 10 to the 9 instead of 8.99. So, um, these small rounding errors are not that significant, but, um, you know, it's good to uh, keep them in mind as to why we might get discrepancies in our calculations. Okay, cool. So that calculates um, VA. Now let's find our potential at point B. At point b okay so looking at our diagram we pretty much have to draw this whole thing except um not with without point a because point a is not really relevant to um finding our potential at point b because there's no charges at point a and only things that have charges are going to be relevant to our calculation of potential okay so here we have uh q2 which is equal to um 10 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs four meters down from there we have q1 which is equal to negative six i mean not negative six negative two times ten to the negative six coulombs okay and point b is going to be four meters this way 
Okay. Now you see we the distance between um, point B and Q two. Well, it's uh, um, it's not gonna be all sunshines and rainbows and just uh, directly given to us on the diagram. So we're gonna need to improvise a little bit. And let me get a different color, maybe a red here, because the actual distance is gonna be this. So this will be he R two. Let's call this R1. This is going to be equal to, well, you see that this is a right angle triangle, so this must be the square root of 4 squared plus 4 squared Pythagoras theorem, which is going to be um, the square root of 36, I think, because that's going to be 16. 4 squared plus 4 squared. It's going to be the square root of 32. which is equal to 5.657 meters. Okay, so that's gonna be our distance for um, R2. And we need that because we cannot just, um, it's not directly given to us on the diagram, so we gotta calculate it ourselves. Okay, nothing to worry about. We can keep it moving along here and let's do our calculation. Or let's set up our equation for our calculation first. So VB, following the same procedure, KQ1 over R1 plus KQ2 over R2. We know that K is going to be the same for both, so we can factor that out, but R1 and R2 are not the same, so um, inside the bracket we're going to be stuck with this. R1 plus Q2 divide R2. Okay, and let's sub in our numbers to make this work out. So we have 9 times 10 to the 9 over there on the outside. Q1, um, we have negative 2 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs divided by 4 meters. That one was directly readable from the diagram, so that's nice and easy. Plus um, 10 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs divided by 5.6657 meters. Yep, and that came from the red hypotenuse. Um, I'll give that a red underline, so that's super clear. Cool, so let's send this into my calculator and figure out exactly what this calculation is going to be. So we got 9 times 10 to the power 9 times, in brackets, negative 2 divide 4 plus 10 divided by 5.657. But convert them to micro and my calculation for this is going to be um, 11 409 volts <laughs> okay so uh, another way that we can write this is 11.4 kilovolts and this would be our potential as observed from B. And this kind of makes sense because this should be lower, um, or this is lower than um, the one that we calculated previously, and it's, it's farther from both of those charges, so it does seem like it could be a reasonable answer. Let's see if our uh, calculation down here is good. And it's um, approximately even. Um, that's likely due to um, the Coulomb's law not being the same. That's probably what's caused that, but otherwise, uh, this solution is good. So just find the individual contributions, add them together, and that will be the total uh, potential at a certain point. Okay, so here, the above, above solution is good. Cool.